Creating a trench broom level is cool and all, but it's kind of boring if you're just building out of blocks and there's no enemies or interactions. Today, we're going to change that. Alright, first up, dark mode. Go to view, preferences, view again, theme, change that to dark, press apply, then restart your trench broom real quick. I also recommend opening your trench broom install folder, go to the games, and then any game that you haven't made, you can delete if you aren't making maps for it. So clear up clutter, just make it easier for you to use trench broom, because now when you launch it, whenever you click new map, only your games will show up. Next, load up Godot, go to your maps, right click on it, show in file explorer, then you want to press open with, then you'll have to scroll down, look for another app, and choose trench broom level editor. Then your files will be set to use trench broom as the default. So now, you can just open an external program in Godot and instantly open the map. We're also going to touch on some other controls real quick. You can use the shift key on pretty much any face of an object to extrude it. You can use control to duplicate it. All right, off camera, I just cleared our platform here a little bit, resized it. Next up is the brush tool. You can click and drag, create a square. And then whenever you click on other points, it will add them to your shape. Then you hold shift and you can drag up and down to extrude it. Then press enter to make that solid geometry. Clip mode is pretty straightforward. Um, it lets you select two points and then you can clip that part of the geometry off. If you use control enter, it will swap modes. So this will just separate them. This clips that part, this clips that part. Shear mode is also pretty straightforward. It lets you select a face and then drag it along that uh, axis. Two more useful keybinds are control F, which flips it horizontally, control alt F, which flips it vertically. Next, we've got the CSG operations. There's convex merge, subtract, hollow, and intersect. They're all pretty self-explanatory. Convex merge is a little more confusing. Um, hollow, hollows out the object. Subtract will subtract to the object from other geometry. So if we clone this real quick, press subtract. Now we've got that with the subtracted part. Intersect takes two brushes. Then we click intersect and it'll give us the intersected part of the geometry. Then finally, we've got convex merge which if we take two brushes like this, convex merge them, it will kind of fill in the gaps in between. Next up is the texture lock and UV lock. The texture lock is kind of similar to triplanar mapping, that type of thing. Um, whenever disabled, the texture will not move with the object. When enabled, the texture will move with the object. UV lock is a little less useful. Um, Whenever turned on, if you move like an edge or a face or vertex, these bricks here, or whatever texture you're using, will follow it. So it moves like diagonally now, since we've moved it. If UV lock is off, then they'll just say, they'll just stay straight across. Trench broom entities are objects placed in the map that have properties and behaviors defined by the game engine. They can be anything from player spawn points, enemies, items, triggers, lights, etc. You should probably determine on a project by project basis whether you're going to use trench broom for your entities. It can take a while to set up, but when set up, can be faster to reiterate on level design and can also be easier for someone without programming experience to understand. To get started with entities, we need to specify two things. First, we want to make a new folder called definitions. Then in that, and look for Kado FGD file. Then we can save this as my game or whatever you're calling your game, whatever you want to call this, it's fine. This is basically like your asset pack, and you'll put all of your assets inside of here. So now that we've got that, we're going to go to the base FGD files, and then in add ons, Kado game definitions FGD. We're going to drag Kado FGD into there. Make sure you also change the FGD name to something besides Kado, otherwise it will give you an error whenever you load Trench Broom. I'm just going to name it My Game. I was also getting an error when I didn't have any entity definitions. 
So for now, we're just going to go to add-ons, cut out FGD point classes, and then add a light point class dot T res. Save it, export file. Now that we've got that created, we need to actually specify the trench broom game config to use that. Where it says FGD files, there's going to be four here already. We can go ahead and just clear them all out and then drag in our new FGD we just made. While we're here, if you haven't already renamed your game name, you should rename that. I'm going to name it Trench Broom Entities. And then click Export File. This will update your game definition with the new FGD list and then also your new name. Since the other map we made had a different name for the game definition, um, we're going to have to create a new map. So just go to New Map, Trench Broom, Open Preferences, Make sure Trench Broom Entities is set to the proper game path, or whatever you named your new project. Apply, OK, and then make sure you select it, press OK. And now in the Entity tab, we'll have these three. We've got Light, Receiver, and Signal. So if we save this real quick, and then open back up Godot, we can load this map in, and now it's built with a light on it. It's a little hard to see, but it's right there. The default Trench Broom stuff is cool and all, but let's say we want to make our own entity like a weapon or an enemy or something like that. All we have to do is go to definitions, create new, resource, search up Kado. Then we're gonna create a point class. A point class is basically just a position in space um, that an object is placed, while a solid class is more like a physics object. We're gonna rename it test, save it. Then we've got all these options over here in the inspector. We've got scene file, script class, class name, description, class properties, base class, node class, what we're going to do is we're going to create an omni light that we can change the color, the energy, and then the distance of. So for node class, we're going to type in omni light 3D. We're going to change the class name to omni. Then we're going to change the description to omni directional light. With just these settings here, whenever you load this, it will create an omni light 3D, but the omni light will not have a color or a special energy value or anything. So for class properties, we're going to go ahead and add all the properties we want. Add string for both. Then we're going to set it to light color. Then we're going to set the value to full white. Add key value pair. We're going to add energy. Going to set that to an int and then make it just one for now. Then we're gonna add range, and that's also gonna be an int, and we're gonna set that to five for now. And now whenever we open this in Trench Broom, these, will, these properties here will show up on the side right here. So this has a property called angle. Um, this is just a default light, but we can add custom properties there. So these will all show up there now. But whenever we f build this in Godot, it won't update. So we need to add a script that updates these properties whenever the game runs. So to do that, we're going to go to script class, create a new GD script, click on it. And here we're going to paste this. We've got the properties dictionary, which is shared between Godot and Trench Broom whenever the map is built. Then the ready function, which whenever the game runs, it just updates all the properties of the node to match the properties from Trench Broom. So now with that updated, we're going to reopen our Trench Broom map and then under entities, We've got Omni right next to our light and our other entities. We're going to replace our old light with our new Omni. And then right here, we've got energy, light color, and range. We can change these to be whatever we want. So now there's going to be a yellow light here. I can duplicate it, and then I can create an orange light or a red light right over here. So now it's going to be red. This one will be yellow. We can save this. Then when we reload the map in Godot, those Omni lights will now be part of our map. However, they're gonna be white until you run the game. I just positioned a camera real quick. This is what they look like. Another thing real quick before you go, Kiddo also comes with a few entities right out of the box. These are signals, receivers, movers, um, buttons. So if I resize this to kind of create a door or a barrier, I can right click, create brush entity, then mover. Then if I come here, show default properties, we've got all these properties here. We've got target name. We're going to rename that to door. Then if we create a new little square here, we're going to make this 
a trigger and then we're going to set the target to door. So now they're linked. And then in Godot, whenever you walk over this, it'll make this door move. Um, we didn't actually set up a position for it to move to. So we're going to set the translation to four. And then we're going to go back to Godot real quick. Back in Godot, I just added a directional light, a camera 3D, and a player. So now whenever I load my map and the player walks on that trigger, the door will open for the player. One more, another thing before I go. Um, Godot comes with a bunch of example scenes. So if you'd like to check those out to see how things like signals and physics objects and stuff like that work, like more in detail, all you have to do is choose one of these maps, drag them in, and you can build it. So this is a giant hammer that's about to hit these physics blocks and then send them flying. There's a few other really cool ones too. I've got a few more resources for learning more about Trench Broom and Kado in the description. Please share the video with your friends if you think they'd find it useful. Damn, so this shit's loud.